I'm John and uh, this is a reflection about one of the Ten Commandments. One Sunday morning I, I was standing at the communion rail, I was waiting to receive the bread and wine. I, I glanced up and saw the Ten Commandments on the board, on the wall, like they have in lots of churches. You remember how they start? The authorised version, of course, because uh, the church was built in 1870 and that's what they used in those days. Remember? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's what I was looking at, but it didn't seem quite right. I had the feeling that something was missing, so I, I, later on I, I checked. You can do that for yourself in, in Exodus 20. It starts in verse 1. I'll stick with the AV for the moment. And God spake all these words, saying... And what comes next? What did God say? He didn't start by saying, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That comes later in verse 3. The first thing he said in verse 2 was this. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And that's missing from the board on the wall. I'm going to suggest in a moment why that verse is so important uh, as the real start of the Ten Commandments. But, but, but let me digress just for a moment, in, in case you think I'm knocking out church. I googled for Ten Commandments and I clicked on the tab which shows you pictures of them. And probably over 80% of them uh, start with, Thou shalt have no other gods. So we're not alone in starting uh, at verse 3, far from it. Uh, only about 20% start with, um, uh, I am the Lord thy God, or the modern equivalent of it, I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of uh, Egypt out of the land of slavery. We're in good company, but all is not lost for the Anglican Church. If you go to the main Anglican website, and that's www.churchofengland.org, and look at what we believe, you'll find a shortened version of the Ten Commandments, which uh, does start with, I am the Lord your God. So why are those words important? We talk about the Ten Commandments, uh, and so they are, but there is another name for them. In Exodus 34, we read that Moses wrote on the tablets, the tablets of stone, that is, the words of the covenant, which were the Ten Commandments. And they're the words of a covenant, it says there. But what is a covenant? A covenant is simply a formal agreement between two parties. Think of a contract. Think of a treaty, and that's what a covenant is. That's what a covenant was in those days as well. One of the parties was the children of Israel, the other party was God. A covenant sets out what uh, each side will do for the other. If we start the commandments, the, commandments, the Ten Commandments, at, at verse 3, they were only getting one side of the bargain. We're only learning what God wants us to do. And that's all that's on the wall of many churches. But what is God giving us in return? He's giving us verse 2. I am the Lord your God. It does seem a bit lopsided though, doesn't it? I mean, it takes 15 verses to tell us what God uh, wants of us. But he only offers us a single verse. Verse 2. I am the Lord your God. That says it all. He doesn't need to say any more. He calls himself Lord. He calls himself God. And that means he's powerful. He's so powerful, there's nothing he can't do. He doesn't need to list all the things he can do. He couldn't list them anyway, because the list would never end. He's all-powerful. But he's not remote and detached. He says, I am the Lord your God. I can do anything for you. And just in case the Israelites were in any doubt, he reminds them of what he recently did do for them. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. But what's that got to do with us? He's still all-powerful. He didn't bring us out of Egypt, but most of us can remember what he has delivered us from. Sometimes we share those memories with others, uh, sometimes they're just a bit too personal, but never let's forget what he's done for us. It's not just the past. 
is the present as well. I am the Lord your God, he says, not I was the Lord your God. The same God three and a half thousand years ago in 1870 and now. He is our God, our all-powerful God. He can do anything for us and he will. That's his side of the bargain. We'll finish with a couple more verses. Uh, in fact, the first two and a half verses of Isaiah 43, which, which, which echo the first two verses of, of Exodus 20. They remind us that he is our God, not just in the past, not just in the present, but in the future as well, whatever the future has to throw at us. But now this is what the Lord says. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you won't be burned. The flames won't set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. Amen.